Welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be working on a project you might want to consider. Tape dispensers as gifts. It's not a quick and easy project, but it will test your woodworking skills and you'll probably enjoy that. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how we do this. For this project, I started out with a diagram of how the tape dispenser is going to work. Uh, there's a light dash line around here that shows the maximum diameter, inside diameter for a tape roll. There'll be a lid here that opens up to put the tape down in. There'll be a dowel. And what you'll need is a one inch dowel. If you can find something like that at the store, that's great. We're going to be making a dowel actually out of walnut. In order to cut this out, we're going to need either a coping saw or a bandsaw and the wood that I'm choosing for the center piece of wood is a piece of walnut stock that I've milled down to seven eighths of an inch thick for my outside pieces I'll be using white ash and I made a template and to maximize uh, or minimize waste I've laid that out and we'll roughly cut that out on a bandsaw. To drill the holes, you'll need a one inch Forstner bit. And for this curve here, I'm using a one and an eighth Forstner bit. It'd be nice if you have a spindle sander or something like that to uh, cut out your curves. And for your cutting blade, maybe you have an old jigsaw or a metal cutting blade that we can cut and install that. To make the cutting more precise, I'll install some double stick tape and laminate the three pieces together before drilling and sanding. The holes have been marked for the one inch dowel, so we'll drill those. The next thing I want to do is drill my one and an eighth inch radius, and we'll do that now.
Since I'm making two of these, I've marked one just to uh, keep the parts from getting mixed up. So I've put together the center pieces, keep a dowel in there so everything is lined up and on this pattern we'll be cutting around here and we'll be cutting a slot here which will be a hinge point so that this piece can be lifted up. One of the more tricky parts of this build I have to install a hinge pin here so that this can swing up out of the way in order to load the tape and I have to kind of guess exactly where that hinge pin is going to be so that I don't bind this thing but it's got to be tight enough so that when the hinge comes down and closes that I don't have a gap there where this comes down too far. So what I'm using for this is some rod. You could use a finishing nail or some other kind of long nail. Probably would have to be at least an eight penny and perhaps cut the head off. So I'm going to mark where I think that hole needs to be and pre-drill it. I'm going to come up about a little over an eighth of an inch from that cut line and an equal distance in from the outside edge. And I've taped everything together to keep it in place. Since my bit's a little wobbly, I've chucked it so it only goes through uh, half of the distance I need to drill. Take it out the rest of the way and check my depth. So 
So I'm going to just tap the pin part way down just to make sure it works in case I have to pull it back out. Yeah, I think that'll work. Could be that that bit's a little, or the hole's a little crooked because when this comes up, it kind of shifts to the left. But I don't think my drill press can grab a chuck a bit that small. So when I cut the tape cutter out of an old hacksaw blade, I made it just a little bit wider than this piece of wood so that when it's glued and clamped, that should hold the blade down without necessarily uh, having to glue it in place. And remember, the only place I'll be gluing is the front and back side of this piece. We will not be gluing that curve. To keep this hole as straight as possible, I'm just chucking half the length of my bit and I'll drill part way down and then I'll move my bit down a little further only because that bit's got a bit of a wobble to it. did also file just a little bit of a point on that pin. So tap that down. And I just want to go part way so that I can try it. I'd say that it's pretty nice. So when I cut the blade, I did cut it a little wider than the slot. Hopefully uh, when that's glued together, it'll pinch together and I won't really have to put so much glue down in there. But this is the only piece that gets glued. And we'll apply glue to both sides. I 
did put a little dab of glue right on the slot. So that'll go together like that. I can put that pin in. Helps to have a little wet rag available in case you have any glue that wants to squeeze out. It's a lot easier to clean up at this stage. And you don't really want a lot of glue. It might affect your finish. So we'll put them aside and let the glue dry. We have two steps left. One is to go back to the sander and clean up any rough edges. And then we're ready for the finish. My finish for this project is going to be a Minwax wipe on poly. You can use a, an oil finish. You could put a wax on it. I chose not to go with a wax simply because if the tape touches here, uh, I thought maybe the wax wouldn't allow the tape to stick. So we'll give this a wipe down and probably switch to a, a cloth that is fuzz free. Give that a final wipe down. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little project. The tricky part is making sure you don't lift this up too high when you're trying to insert your tape in, or you might break this. But I hope you enjoyed the project. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to see the next video coming out, be sure to hit that bell notification down in the lower right corner. Until next time, River Guide saying thanks for watching.